Sharma calls up Mr. Kothiyar. Mr. Kothiyar, yes. I, I heard that your son was selected in one of the best colleges in Uttarakhand. Oh, come on, Mr. Kothiyar. I have heard that your son has got selected in the best engineering college of Delhi. Now, the fact is that little did they know where their child is actually going into. They are actually sending their children at a place where the condition today is actually drastic. And I'll support each and every word that I said with some facts. As of now, in the session 2016-2017, there are 3,289 colleges who have been affiliated with AICT, which means that more than 15 and a half lakh engineers are being produced every year. Now, let me tell you an alarming situation. With not more than 3 lakh jobs being created every year, 80% of these people will be unemployed. So the people who are studying engineering as of now, who are considered to be the nation builders, will not even be getting a job. I see some engineers who have some glum faces today. Besides that, that is not the only problem which is going to come up. The second problem that is going to come up is the problem of underemployment. In 2015, did you people read the news that out of 368 vacancies that, were, that came out for a job of a peon in UP, do you have any idea how many people applied for that particular job? Any random figure, what do you think? 10 lakh. 10 lakhs? Well, 23 lakh people applied for that job where only 368 vacancies were there. There were PhD holders, there were MBA people and 2.2 lakh people who applied for that job were engineers. Now a second situation that I tell you. I hope all of you know that the UP elections are coming up very shortly. So as per their requirements, they are looking for some engineers who will be taking care of the, of the facilitation, availability and then the counting of the votes. So they will be providing you with the voting machines and they will be taking care of all that. The amount that they would be given on a monthly basis is a meager 12,000 rupees. Besides that, now let's suppose the elections end in May. So they do not have a job guarantee and again, when May comes, they'll again have to look for a job to just make both ends meet. I'm not talking about living a luxurious life or anything, you just need to, in order to survive also, you require money. Now these are just some of the things. Unemployment is one, underemployment is one. How many of you are aware about the fact that there is a page on Facebook by the name Logical Indian? Some, do some of you follow that page? The Logical Indian had recently covered a person who is an engineer who was, as of now, driving autos in Delhi to feed his family. Besides that, there is a person by the name Manjunath Reddy who took up to chain snatching in the suburbs of Mumbai, who is an engineer sadly, to take care of his family. There was one more incident of an engineer in Aurangabad who has taken to car lifting to take care of his family. The sad part is that the young blood of today has actually become very, very spineless. We take care of and we just go into any temptation that comes our way without having any guts, any fight or putting up any sort of efforts from our side to at least get what we want. The harsh part is, if I explain this to a student who is studying in his first year as of now, <coughs> he will not even think about it because in first year we go to a college, we are all high on various expectations. We come to Dehradun and we are studying in, let's say, DIT, we are more focused upon going to Masuri and all those things, rather than on our studies. By the time the third and the fourth year comes, it is the fact that the colleges then start thinking that my students now actually have to take up professional studies, professional communication, take care of their interview skills, take care of their group discussion skills. But the fact is that just six months or eight months is not adequate enough for you to prepare for an interview. Now, these were some of the problems. Do we have solutions as well? Yes. I went through some of the articles and I realized that there are a lot of solutions if worked upon properly. The first solution is, we first need to take care of the fact that the mushrooming of colleges does not happen. There are so many colleges, we work with some of them, I would not like to name them. You won't even believe it if there is a person who is coming into the college by a Fortuner or an Audi or a Honda City. The fees that he will be charged for, a, for the same course will be comparatively much more than a person who is coming to the college in let's say a bus. This is what happens. There are so many colleges in Rajasthan who are not charging students for the first year of their education just for the sake of filling up the seats in their college. Secondly, the curriculum needs to be in sync 
with what is being taught or what is with the technological and the various advancements that are happening. We do not need to study as of now about some engine which is not even being made or which is not even being put in a car as of now. Third, we need to have more people coming in from the industry who will actually be telling students about the practical approach. One more thing that can be done, it can also be made compulsory for the students who are studying engineering to work on a part-time basis in the industries. This way both the aspects would be taken care of. We'll have more people from the industry coming in and the students will also be getting exposure to it. One more thing which the students also need to realize is, if you cannot speak even one sentence in English, please forget about getting placed in an MNC. The worst fact is that there are so many students who are actually blaming the college after their placement seasons get so well, but they do not look at the mirror, they do not look at themselves, are we adequate enough to get into a good college, into a good job? And if more and more students during their school days itself would be told about the various streams besides engineering, besides the various forms of engineering, let's say journalism, let's say writing, let's say travel blogging, then more and more people would be coming up and working in these categories. If some of these things can be taken care of by the colleges as well as the students and a, and a cumulative efforts would be put, I believe that this depressing condition of the engineers can be taken care of. I'll give you one more example before concluding my speech. I have one of my volunteers from one college in Dehradun and he told me that sir, there are a few seniors of ours who are living in Delhi who are looking for a job. They just have it one or two meals a day because they cannot ask for money after four years and in just order to survive, they are doing some things which cannot be considered to be discussed even in public as of now. But I truly believe that if combined efforts can be put by the college as well as the students, we can take care of the situation and at least bring in a positive change. Thank you so much.